Hello everyone, welcome back to YK Reviews. Welcome back to another weekly entertainment news video. As we're gonna be talking about trailers that have been released this week, we've got some update when it comes to horror in terms of Black Phone 2, Poltergeist TV series in the works. The Barbarian is gonna have a video game adaptation. And of course, the big news of the week, the one that everybody's been talking about, of the Marvel situation. So let's get straight into it here. <laughs> Now, as per usual, timestamps will be in the description down below for all the new story there. For anything you want to skip around to, anything you're more interested in, timestamps will be in the description down below. And if you are new to the channel and you do like these types of videos, consider hitting that subscribe button. Looking at my subscribe account, my goal is to reach 300 by the end of the year. And I'll be completely honest with you, I've never been focused on like targets or goals in terms of subscriber counts, but just seeing the numbers just going up here, it's a personal goal that I'm kind of reaching for the end of the year. So again, if you are new, definitely consider subscribing to the channel and also like the video, share the video, spread it out to as many people as possible. So I really do appreciate all that support, but we're just gonna dive right into it here because the first trailer that got released in terms of Marvel side of things here was the Echo trailer. Now it completely came out of the blue and I mentioned it in my shorts and I'll post my shorts reaction somewhere here so you can go check that out later on. But I said that this show, I felt like wasn't needed and I'll, I'll be honest with you and I'm gonna put my hands up right now. I was completely wrong after watching this trailer with the character in its it's focusing on Maya and Kingpin and that relationship and I'm loving what they're showing so far you get a little sneak peek of Daredevil so he's going to be in the show as well but I'm loving the fight sequences I'm loving the gore the violence it's confirmed to be TV mature so we're going to get a lot of more hardcore stuff when it comes to this and it's confirmed that all the episodes are going to be released on the very same day so similar to like Netflix kind of stuff which they kind of confirmed it a couple of months ago when they were talking about like all the changes and uh, new schedules for Marvel so I'm honestly really pumped about this it's coming out in January so just like a standalone show for riding Echo really did exceed my expectations so definitely got my hype level up let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below if you have seen the trailer what your thoughts are about it will you be checking it out did it exceed your expectations let me know in the comment section down below before the next trailer once again a trailer that honestly did exceed my expectation was the trailer for the full guys it looked like a rom-com comedy but as the trailer progressed, and I'll be completely honest with you, they revealed a lot in the trailer, which I honestly hate with these trailers when they reveal so much. They basically reveal the whole movie. But with this trailer, it was so entertaining and really enjoyable. I'm loving the action set pieces. I'm loving the, the rom-com aspects of it. I'm also loving like R Ryan Gosling in this. It looks like his comedic timing is just so spot on. He's got that charismatic nature to him. Coming off the back of the gray man, Barbie, of course, and now this. I definitely am gonna be checking it out when it does come out in theaters next year. I believe it was March that it was coming out. Definitely exceeded my expectations with this trailer. So again, if you have seen the trailer, let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. Is this one you'll also be checking out? Will you give it a miss? Let me know in the comment section down below. Okay, and for the final trailer I wanna talk about here is the trailer for the Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes. Now this is the next Planet of the Apes movie. And while they didn't show too much in terms of like the plot or what's going on here, in terms of like the cinematography, in terms of like just the small little details that they did reveal, I'm honestly all for it. I loved the Matt Reeves trilogy with the Planet of the Apes. For me, the big standout, especially with that first movie, is that third act, the bridge sequence. With The second and third movie really was great follow-ups, especially that third movie. I'm not going to reveal too much if you haven't seen it, but if you haven't seen it, highly highly recommend that trilogy it really isn't talked about enough and with this one the continuation i really am liking what i'm seeing so far this one coming out in may of next year if it doesn't get delayed but i really really do like what we're seeing so far and hopefully we do get more trailers we do get more like i said hopefully they don't reveal the whole damn movie in the trailer when they do reveal the next trailer but really i'm enjoying what i'm seeing so far so again let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below if you have seen the trailer and also your thoughts are about the about the matt reeves trilogy movie which one is your standout which one is your favorite movie of that whole trilogy let me know in the comment section down below okay now for the next couple of sections here now i know halloween has finished and i hope everybody had a good october 31st hope everybody had a good halloween season but i want to dive into some like horror news horror related um news here with the first one in regards to terrifier 3 now terrifier 2 was released in theaters once again for everybody everybody got this really sweet looking poster that i'm honestly kind of jealous of and while they were in the theaters, they released a small teaser of the Terrifier 3 movie just before Terrifier 2. Now, I haven't seen the teaser just yet. I've heard about what they showed and about how this got this Christmas setting here. 
And based on what I heard so far, I really am liking it. Full confession though, I haven't seen the first Terrifier movie. I've only seen the second one. So I'm gonna be doing a rewatch on both of them. But we have got confirmation in terms of the release date when it comes to Terrifier 3. So it is confirmed that it's gonna be a Christmas movie. And it looks like we might be waiting a little bit longer because this is confirmed here that Terrifier 3 is gonna be released in theaters on October 25th of 2024. So we're gonna be waiting pretty much a year till the next movie, which is such a shame, like such a long wait, but I really am looking forward to this and it's gonna be a really great movie just based on like what the little small little teasers that we have seen. Again, confirming it's gonna be a Christmas movie. So it's gonna be really curious to see how this is gonna be portrayed, how it's gonna take place. We already know how bloody it's gonna be. So I know what I'm doing on October 25th of next year. So again, if you've seen the teaser, let me know what your thoughts are about that. And also your thoughts are about the release date. Will you be checking it out? Have you seen the previous two? please let me know in the comment section down below okay now as we're continuing in terms of like release date for horror movies here we've got confirmation as well in terms of a black phone so the black phone 2 is going to be releasing in june of 2025 so june 27th 2025 and they've even confirmed that the black phone 2 will be launched of a sinister new franchise so they're looking to turning this into a whole new franchise now if you haven't seen the movie really really great movie i did actually a review of that i'll post that somewhere around here you can go check that out but if you haven't seen the movie i won't go into details of like what happened or spoil the ending or anything like that but i'm really curious to know what they're going to do with it whether it's going to be a prequel or whether it's going to be a continuation of the events that happened at the end of this movie really i'm curious especially in regards to what happened at the end of the first movie again no spoilers and now the fact that they're going to be launching this into a whole new franchise curious to know what they're going to be focusing on or how, what they're going to be developing in terms of not only just part two but then if they're doing a franchise it's going to be like maybe spin-offs and then another couple of movies there so i'm really really curious about that but i really had a fun time with the first movie definitely got that aura about it in terms of like the creepiness the eeriness even the tension and the suspense throughout the movie especially when it comes to like the kid and especially that kid too was did a fantastic job in the movie so really really curious about that let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below a what your thoughts are about this turning into a whole new franchise and b what your thoughts are about the release date and what they could be doing for part two if you have seen the movie let me know in the comment section down below okay now for the next news story this is one i found really really interesting here is coming from the variety confirming the poltergeist tv series is in early development at amazon mgm studio now we're saying here that the series of the version of the iconic film poltergeist is currently in early development at the amazon mgm studio Variety has learned exclusively as no writer is currently attached to the project and there are no plots to share at this time beyond the fact that it's going to be set within the world of the film and I'll be completely honest with you like the movie itself really entertaining movie honestly highly recommend that movie as well if you haven't seen it but it's just very very curious in terms of like the kind of route that they're gonna go with in terms of like what they could possibly do with the story it's, honestly it's been a really long time since I've actually seen the movie here so I kind of have forgot the events of like what happened in terms of like the third act in terms of the ending of the movie really really need to well watch it to refresh my memory to be honest but it just seems like a lot of horror movies are now turning into like tv series as well look at chucky look at friday the 13th look at halloween too it looks like we're going to be having another tv series when it comes to poltergeist but there is a lot of potential that you could do with this franchise with this series i'm actually holding back expectations because i'm not going to trash it or I'm not going to be going in really excited I want to know who's going to be attached to it in terms of like the director and in terms of like the cast because I really am curious to see what kind of plot they're going to go with before I can get my expectations up but so far I'm actually all on board with them going for like a tv series out with the poltergeist so again let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below if you've seen the movie what your thoughts are about the movie and what your thoughts are about what they could do with the series okay now one I honestly was not expecting here is that Coming from the bloody disgusting, confirming that the Barbarian movie, a movie I really, really did enjoy, and once again, looks like it's a theme going on here with today's episode. If you haven't seen the movie, definitely recommend it, definitely check it out because it really is a good movie. So we're confirming here that Barbarian is getting a video game adaptation from the new Regency Pictures in Division 3. Zack Kreger's hit Barbarian is the latest horror movie to be getting a video game adaptation for PC and consoles. Bloody Disgusting has the exclusive scoop on the upcoming video game this afternoon, so Division 3 Entertainment will lead the creative team adapting the Barbarian video game form. Having Division 3 Entertainment on board is a big deal right off the bat. The company previously worked on both the Friday the 13th game and the Evil Dead game. Now I genuinely am curious because I was not expecting this whatsoever. I'll be completely honest with you, I've not played the Evil Dead game. I generally had no idea that there was an Evil Dead game. I've played a little bit of the Friday the 13th game, I've yet to complete it or progress forward in terms of the story. 
but I'm really curious in terms of like what they're going to do with, with the Barbarian video game, how that's going to work. It could have the potential to be a really great video game or it has the potential to just go down just like a rabbit hole there. But the movie itself, because if you haven't seen the movie again, I'm not going to go into like too much spoilers, but there is a lot of interesting things that you could do in terms of like a video game adaptation, in terms of like the story that you can go with as a video game. And for me, as like a huge video game player and a fan of horror movies, a fan of this movie. I really am actually curious. It has definitely piqued my interest when it comes to this. If this is going to work, how it's going to work and what kind of gameplay style that they are going to do with it. And if it's going to be like a first person game, if it's going to be a multiplayer game, really, really curious. I'm definitely going to be keeping an eye out on this. So let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. You hear that this is going to be turned into a video game. Will you be checking it out? Will you definitely be playing it? Let me know in the comment section down below. Okay, now for the next news story, it's just a quick update when it comes to like the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle movies, the Mutant Mayhem one. We sort of got like a small update in terms of like what the focus is going to be when it comes to like the next villain here. So this is coming from the Collider saying TMNT director promises Shredder leading a villain forward Mutant Mayhem 2. So it's saying here that Rowan and his team will, will spend quite a bit of time taking a hard look at the character and seeing what they can do with it that will feel fresh like Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Mutant Mayhem did, a movie I honestly really recommend. Such a great movie. Definitely in the top five movie of the year for me so far. But we continue here as he told the Collider, that is exactly what I am trying to figure out and what my next meeting will be about. That is what we are in the thick of now. Shredder is just a great character. He's an iconic, classic, loved character. He's like the Joker. You know who he is. Even if you're not a fan of the source material, I think we definitely want to do a villain forward film. We are currently trying to make the decision about that. But those decisions for us as filmmakers are always going to come from the place of what tells us best story, specifically about our main character, the Turtles. Now, for me, as a fan of like the shows growing up, of the movies growing up, as a massive fan of like the Turtles, as you can see, I'm currently in the middle of like reading The Last Ronin. I'm a huge, huge Turtles fan, as you can see right here. I've reviewed all the movies, so I'll actually put a playlist up here so that you can also check it out. Honestly, doing a lot of shameless plugs throughout this episode, so you I'm sorry, if you, you can't blame me for that. But when it comes to Mutant Mayhem, it really did take me by surprise in terms of like how fun and entertaining and enjoyable the movie is. And with Shredder, I definitely feel like Shredder is overplayed at times, especially when it comes to like the movies, like look at Michael Bay's portrayal of the Shredder. And honestly, like I always say, the less said about that portrayal, the better. Spoiler alert if you haven't seen the movie, but at the end of the movie, they sort of did tease the Shredder at the very end of the movie. So they are definitely going to go with that route. And I really am curious to see how they're going to go with that. Like I said, I want them to do the Shredder right in this movie, in this franchise, because like they mentioned, it's similar to like the Joker with the Joker being done so many times. It's all about finding the right direction and the right use for him. And so similar with the Shredder now, I really do have faith in this adaptation because of like the Mutant Mayhem movie and what they did with it. So again, let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. What you think they should do with the Shredder, what your thoughts are about that. Let me know all of that in the comment section down below. Okay, now for the next news story here is unfortunately we have got some more bad news when it comes to movies and shows being delayed here because of the actor strike. Now, in terms of the actor strike, quick update when it comes to that is that they're still in negotiation. They've been talking pretty much every single day this week in terms of like the, the major sticking points when it comes to fair pay, when it comes to AI. Now, it has been reportedly that the AI is the major sticking point when it comes between the two sides here and reportedly that there is going to be a meeting over the weekend with the CEOs being involved with that negotiation. So it looks like that the end might be near, but we're still in the unknown region here. It could be resolved by the end of this week, by the weekend, or it could be that they're still going to be ongoing and they'll still be on strike. However, because of all of this, we have got confirmation here with a couple of things being delayed. So first of all, the White Lotus season three is going to be moving to 2025 here. Now, I'll, I'll be honest, I've not seen the first two seasons. My wife loves that show. The theme song of the show really is catchy. and we've got confirmation that the IT prequel series, so Welcome to Dairy 1 with Pennywise, has unfortunately also been moved to 2025, saying here, Dairy, we had that scheduled for Halloween 2024. That's likely 2025. What well, White Lotus season three probably would have been in play for 2024, but it's 2025, says the HBO and Max boss 
Casey Blois. Apologies if I butchered that name, by the way. And honestly, that's just so frustrating because I really was looking forward to, to the It prequel series. It's a show that I've been really looking forward to, especially because a couple of months ago, before the whole writer's strike, they did show a couple of screenshots of behind the scenes and that looks like they're getting ready to film. But now it looks like it's going to be delayed. So that's going to be 2025 now, unfortunately. And we also got confirmation here that The Last of Us Season 2 is expected to begin production in early 2024. However, with the whole writer's strike, we still don't know if that's going to be set in stone right now. It was originally going to be, I believe, filming this year, like around this time. But it looks like that's going to be pushed back now. So early 2024 is what we're looking at right now. And also we've got the Penguin show, like the one I really, really, really was looking forward to, wanting to dive back into Matt Reeves' Batman world with the Penguin. They've released a couple of teasers earlier on here. So confirming that the Penguin has been delayed to the fall of 2024 due to the actor strike. So it's pretty much this time next year, potentially which is just so unfortunate and so frustrating. It looks like early 2024, especially when it comes to like streaming services and TV shows, that's going to be very scarce. Not much is going to be releasing from what it looks like. And it looks like everything is just going to be now further delayed end of the year of 2024, most likely everything 2025 now. But it's just Welcome to Derry and Batman is the ones that really, really hit home for me. Like two shows I really was looking forward to in 2024 now. It's going to be delayed to 2025 end of 2024 so pretty much a year over a year now waiting for that like i mentioned they are meeting over the weekend so we should hopefully get an update especially with the ceos coming into the table trying to negotiate like i said the ai is a major sticking point so hopefully they can try to come up with a resolution for that but it's just at this moment it's a waiting game so let me know your thoughts about this in the comment section down below okay now for the final news story here the one that everybody has been talking about mostly this week is about marvel with the variety article that came out here now if you're not aware if you've been living under a rock variety came out with the article and even like the title of the article showing here crisis at marvel jonathan major's backup plan the marvel's reshoot reviving original avengers and more issues revealed now i'm going to talk about both sides of things here especially when it comes to like the negative side of things here but things that have also been released in the last couple of days when it comes to this article and debunking some of the stories here but first of all when it actually just comes to the article so there's just a whole bunch of different things that they did talk about when it comes to Marvel side of things here. So it's saying here that this past September, a group of Marvel creatives, including studio chief Kevin Foggy, assembled in Palm Strings for the studio's annual retreat. But this occasion was angst ridden. Everyone at Marvel was reeling from a series of disappointments on screen, a legal scandal involving one of the biggest stars, questions about the viability of the studio's ambition strategy to extend the brand beyond movies into streaming. But the most pressing issue was about Jonathan Major's situation. Now, I'm not going to talk about the whole legal stuff or anything in terms of like outside of Marvel things, because it's not that kind of channel, to be honest with you. But when it comes to like Kang and Jonathan Major in terms of like portraying Kang, it confirms here that the actor who had been poised to carry the next phase of the Marvel Cinematic Universe instead is heading to a high profile trial in New York later this month on domestic violence charges. Apparently backup plans include pivoting to another comic book adversary like Doctor Doom, but making any shift would carry its own headaches. Major was already a big presence in the MCU including the antagonist in Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania and has been positioned as an franchise's next big thing in the Loki series. It even confirms here in the article, Marvel is truly fucked with the whole Kang angle, says one top dealmaker who has seen the final Loki episodes. They haven't had an opportunity to rewrite until very recently because of the WGA strike, but I don't see a path to how they move forward with him. Now, honestly, I'm a huge fan of Doctor Doom, so I do believe that pivoting towards Doctor Doom could have its potential, but it's just with the whole angle that they've been setting up, especially for the last phases of the MCU, it's going to be very difficult to see how they're going to try and pivot towards that. They even like saying that with Kang, especially because of like, not the backlash, but the criticisms and everything facing from Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania, they're kind of like having second thoughts about Kang being like this big thing, being the next Thanos, which honestly, Jonathan Majors Kang was the best part of Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania. Like that is completely not his fault. I do get the whole issue with like the real life situation and what they're going to be doing with that. And like I said, I'm not going to be talking about all of that aspect when it comes to the legal troubles, but 
it's just very worrying times if they're going to be leaning towards Doctor Doom. Like, if it's going to be, if they're going to do it, I hope it's like a smoother transition. But the problem they are facing is that one of the Avengers movie is called Avengers King Dynasty. So how they're going to be pivoting towards Doctor Doom, I honestly have no idea. But that's not just one of the major sticking points here, because they even confirmed that Marvel recently had talks about bringing the original cast for a new Avengers movie, which would involve reviving Iron Man and Black Widow. But they haven't committed to the idea yet. What? Like, what? I'll be completely honest with you. I'll be down to see the original cast in an Avengers movie. Like, honestly, I would be the first one in line to watch that movie. But I don't see how that's going to work when it comes to, like, leading the MCU forward. I just feel like that is a terrible idea. That's kind of just saying that you don't have faith in your current cast or your current leading superheroes. So now it's just leaning towards going back to like the roots, going back to like the glory days. This honestly just really isn't the route to go with when it comes to bringing back characters. And even like the whole situation with Scarlett Johansson, like I believe there was like some lawsuit with her and Disney going on there. So I don't even know how that's going to work. So I really don't see the logic in terms of doing an Avengers movie with the original cast when you're just setting up everything else with all the other characters there but there is more too so in terms of like the blade movie it has been reportedly saying that here Mahashala Ali reportedly considered leaving the blade due to the script issues in one of the versions of the script blade was reportedly relegated to the fourth lead of the movie however Kevin Foggy has since hired Logan writer Michael Green to work on the new script and the film will be moving forward with a budget of less than 100 million that for me, I feel like is a better solution because I would rather do them having going for the practical effects rather than like visual effects and CGI and that kind of stuff for a Blade movie. Now, I love the Logan the, as a movie, but I can't say that I'm overly excited with the writer being involved. Like, like I said, I love the Logan movie, but with everything going on with the MCU and especially with like the whole Blade development hell that it's going with, like I can't be jumping for joy or getting overly excited for it but it's also the fact that he's he has been considered leaving and being relegated to like the fourth lead that for me is a little bit worrisome when it comes to blade like i really just want this movie to go well and just just start its production because like i said i loved the original blade movie i, I can't remember the year that came out but the one with wesley snipes that is such a great Blade movie and like I want to see them redone. I'm a huge fan of Mahashala Ali too so I definitely want this project to do well and just go ahead with it. The fact that he's considered leaving because of everything going on I really couldn't blame him for that but like I said in the last couple of days there has been reports coming out in regards to this article debunking a couple of things here so in terms of like my negative aspects I just want to throw out there when it comes to like Marvel I, like I said, I've been worried about Marvel when it comes to Phase 4 and especially like the last couple of projects here. It feels like it's been quantity over quality. However, they, it does look like they are starting to slowly build the gap and just work on like things again. It has not been all doom and gloom like Loki. For me personally, I'm loving Loki and what they're doing with it. The Echo trailer, like I said, has been doing a fantastic job in terms of like getting me excited for it. I'm really curious to see what they're going to do with that. It definitely has got a lot of potential. I want to start with like the information about the article being debunked here. Now, when it comes to the article itself, I'll be completely honest with you, with the article, it doesn't really show a lot of like sources in terms of the article or like who's saying these things. I feel like a lot of things might have been taken out of context, especially because an article did come out um, from comic book here saying that the Marvel's Blade writer has refuted rumor that Mahashala Ali was fourth lead in the female-led reboot. One of the writers, Michael Strawberry, has offered a comment amid the speculation that Blade was to focus on Briella Brooks, a half-human, half-vampire daughter of Blade, saying here, I worked on a draft of this before the strike. Never saw a version where Blade was the fourth lead or it was a narrative led by women filled with life lessons. He also added that Mahashala Ali's blade was in almost every scene while he was on board the project. I don't know what happened but I'll just say I seriously doubt that he was ever the fourth lead in any draft. And I definitely feel like just a lot of things have been taken out of proportion. Like I feel like when it comes to like the Blade movie, when it comes to the reuniting the old Avengers cast for an Avengers movie, I feel like just a lot of things are trying to spin their narrative and spin the negative aspect when it comes to Marvel. Like yes, Marvel is kind of in a shambles in terms of the projects and the movies and the shows that they have been coming out with lately. A lot of things have just been a lot of misses rather than hits. But I feel like this is just spinning it way too much. And it's just people trying to over hate on Marvel right now because it's at like a, I would say a weak point, but I still just don't buy the whole aspect of 
certain things in the whole article itself. Now I get the whole aspect when it comes to like Kang steering towards Doctor Doom because of like everything outside of their control. But in terms of like Blade, in terms of the Avengers movie, even like criticizing um, the director for like the Marvel's movie too, I just feel like they found a target and they're trying to target it there with just no real like basis from it. But like I said, I feel like Marvel is slowly starting to move on the art, realizing their mistake and gonna start focusing on having more quality over quantity as even Bob Iger said when it comes to Marvel and Star Wars like the big IPs but I want to know your thoughts in the comment section down below what your thoughts are first of all about the article and what was said do you buy all of it do you think that it's being taken completely out of proportion let me know all of that in the comment section down below but that about wraps it up for the weekly entertainment news video here like I said tons to go over video game adaptations release dates delays all of that stuff. So I want to know your thoughts about everything in the comment section down below. And again, if you are new to the channel, definitely consider subscribing so that you're not missing out on these weekly entertainment news videos every single week, along with so much more content coming out, coming your way here. So definitely keep an eye out on the channel again, like, subscribe, share, all that YouTube stuff. But thank you so much for watching and thank you so much for listening. This is YK Reviews. Peace.